we're gonna make our own jet burner and stand and this is how we're going to do it hold on all right Dan <clears throat> here's the setup I didn't figure out this part somebody else had a video I try to put a link to them uh, I'm trying to make an outdoor wok cooking station because I wasn't satisfied with any of the commercial ones you can get any of the burners neither was this other guy he talks about how to make the burner I'm going to do it the same way he did which means you drill a 1.2 millimeter hole in this which I think is 364 ths according to my digital calipers the nearest setting but that worked for him and it's probably going to be fine so anyway here's all the bits and pieces high pressure propane regulator from Amazon with a hose that has uh, a female flare fitting so I had to get a 3 8 inch male flare on that end and a uh, can't remember 3 8 no quarter inch male pipe thread on that end that fits this uh, quarter inch quick connect so it's got a ball valve for shut off and this will be on the actual appliance itself this was an attempt later because I wanted to add a better knob on the appliance end if you will so you could adjust the flame right because this is going to be a little bit fiddly I think it'll work but uh I would have liked to have a more solidly mounted you know because this has got o-rings that'll flex some I wanted something up on this end but I don't have all the bits and pieces here to do it so forget it we're going to proceed with this plan but anyway so this is a quarter inch pipe thread quick connect a half inch to quarter inch black iron reducer of course half inch to half inch elbow and then you know just standard half inch by 18 inch black iron pipe which has half inch uh, pipe threads on the ends and a cap so that should do it um, of course we'll test things out test the burner strength and get that thing figured out where we want to leave it set you can see the psi inside the line it should be handy and we're going to drill this teensy little hole in the center of here and then start screwing stuff together and then where it's going to go is i've seen the other guys the other guy that did this that i watched that built the burner that built his own custom stand well i thought about it and i tried to figure out design and by the time you look at cost of stainless steel how about 30 dollars for a stainless steel not all of it's stainless the bottom's not but the wings are and i wanted to be able to wheel this out when i want to use it and put it back away this is the easiest way i figured to do it I went on facebook marketplace and got a el cheapo used don't know if it works don't care if it works grill but it's little so it's going to fit my needs there's my cast iron wok which just so happens to fit right in there so <clears throat> the plan is to gut everything out of there leave the panel on the front because that's where i'll mount probably the propane quick connect well i don't know what i'm saying but somehow i'm going to put the igniter up here if i maybe i can reuse this one even who knows but I plan on leaving the panel on there, the wings on there. The lid nicely covers uh, the wok, so I probably can leave the wok out too. It did close, of course, now it's gonna hit because, yeah, but this handle are all rickety, so, eh, the base takes some TLC, but it, you know what, it saved a lot of fabrication. It's already got wheels on it, so I can wheel it out. It's got shelves, which are a big problem because with the wok cooking, you're always reaching for something and you cannot fiddle around with time. In a wok on that super high heat, you need everything right now. When you drop the oil in there, you've got like literally 10, 15 seconds. If you splash it all around in there before it reaches its flash point, you need to get food in there. You need to get the rice in, the egg in, all the goodies. So you need shelves with your bowls of ingredients right there with you, or you're gonna burn something to the side of the wok or flash the oil off or, you know, something. You have to be very timely with cooking in a wok. Well, that's the plan. 
that's the burner. Uh, let's see. What else? Where'd the piece go? Oh, yeah. Hold on. So, if I didn't specify what this is going to look like, imagine that pipe with a teensy bitsy hole in it. Then we're going to stick this pipe on there. It gets its air mixture from the gap down there. And it's a jet. We're going to make this pipe six inches long, so we'll put that on the metal saw. Cut off a little bit of it. Uh, that's it. Then we'll kind of teetery lay everything down once the hole's drilled and all the fittings are made up and turn it on and verify the jet's blowing straight up the tube and then we'll simply weld it where it sits boop and that's it that will get installed somewhere through the side walls of that grill somehow we'll figure out how to mount that burner in there get it in and out and uh that's the other reason the test is we need to see how at what height above this we want the wok to sit uh, to kind of get the best heating arrangement out of it so step one is I guess to get that hole drilled make up all these fittings and then go from there but let's get after it I am aware by the way that I'm struggling to keep these projects I mean <clears throat> Not that many of you guys watch these videos. Thank you to all that you do. But uh, it's hard to keep consistency going. Like the tiller's part way done. I need to install that last shim and friction disc. If you watch this channel, then you know what I'm talking about. That outboard motor, still not finished. I've got to complete the fuel fittings and electrical, which is almost done. But again, I got a lot of projects partially done and one or two or three parts of the videos done. And it's hard to uh, stay on track to finish one before starting the other one because you're always waiting for parts to arrive and then real life interjects things like I rebuilt the stairs to the deck at my house etc etc so anyways I realized that this wok cooker if I post that video is going to be out of sync with everything and there's still one more coming for the tiller there's at least one more coming for that outboard motor and then probably everything for this wok will be in one video but Anyway, hang in there and subscribe if you will, and that way you'll uh, be notified when the videos come out to show the completion of these projects. So, anywho, getting back at it. Okay, moving on with the walk. I fussed about myself not finishing that tiller over there. Well, I just finished it. <laughs> so let's move on to this filthy thing. I don't know how what I'm going to cut out. I took the burners out. They're just easy. Pull pull pins and they just lift it right up. Amazingly, change the batter, uh, battery. Electronic igniter works. I think the cord's too short though to work. So, whatever. I already ordered those from Amazon too. So we're covered there. Uh, I got to figure out what height this needs to be. I guess we won't know until the burner gets used, but. I'm gonna tighten up a few things. This handle's rickety. I don't know what holds it on. But somebody tried to lift it by it and it needs loving. I can see the handle split right there. So I don't know what kind of nonsense this is gonna to take to get that halfway tightened up. Same thing with the shelves on the side. And then I wanna figure out how to get this panel off. I gotta squat down and look under there. That's bent. So all little TLC things. But, uh, I don't think I'd be able to put a propane bottle in here. I'd fantasized about that. I don't think there'll be space because I have to mount that pipe pretty low down. There might be though. I might actually be able to, again, as labor saving to get this used thing. If I can do that, that'd be great. Then I'll have wheels. The thing's pretty darn compact. Not much bigger than the wok itself. Stainless, weatherproof. I mean, it's going to be covered anyways under a little roof area but it will be outside and uh you know get the temperature and humidity changes but uh somehow i'm gonna have to gut the bottom of that out of there and hopefully tighten up all the other stuff i just mentioned and proceed from there i don't know how to make this uh surface of this look better i think the button for my new igniters from amazon is the same as that style so it probably goes right through the same hole it just has longer wire on the back type thing uh anyways that's it 
And because I'm a pack rat and scavenger, I guess I'll keep those burners for something. I don't know what. You never know. If I keep all the components together, they could never know get installed in some other nonsense later. So I think they're all stainless steel burners and whatnot. And since everything functions, why throw something like that away? If it's small to store, maybe it will uh, be part of a custom burner elsewhere. Or maybe even some part of this somehow on one of the wings or who knows. I'm going to keep the parts. All right, moving on, tightening up. Yeah, just like I thought, somebody tried to lift it by the handle. I don't think they've broken any little welds off, so I'm just going to give that a love tap and concave it back down, hopefully not break the welds, and then it should tighten up nice. Looky what I discovered. Hot diggity dog. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. That makes it a hell of a lot easier. Boop. Uh-oh. <laughs> There's all the parts, by the way. That's the whole burner situation. There's the igniter. Look, how fun. There's the front panel. But a spot weld broke. Ooh, a reason to use the microwave oven spot welding transformer. Yes. Well, in the words of one of my favorite YouTube entities, zip ties and bias plies, you don't need to worry about safety. Contact. God. Oh. <laughs> Did it work? Oh, it smells like barbecue. Which makes me think maybe it didn't and it just cooked the grease. Oh, it sure did. Oh, she's bonded. Beautiful. Yes. And again. Contact. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's nice when things work. Yes. I win. Looks a lot different when you get to doing a little polishing, huh? 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 Come on. And then it's just over. And then over. I think that will be perfect. There's the inside now. Like I said, that thing comes out. So all I got to do is mount that pipe through there somehow. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it yet because mm, I'd like to have a ball valve control over here, but well, the preliminary work's done. Like I said, that I tightened up the, you know, handles, screws, took out the propane goodies. That piece is probably trash, but I cleaned it up anyway. So there you go. Next step is finish the burner, and then after that, get it installed in here. Well, that's one big ass drill press for one teensy tiny hole. I hope this works. Hmm. Well, what can you do? I guess there's nothing for it but to start drilling. <laughs> the chances. No. Don't break. Don't break. Oh. So far. It's feeling all right. I don't believe it. That's going through it like butter. Shocking. Easy. 
crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> well, that was stupid easy. I wasn't expecting that. Six inches of burner pipe set to go. Boop. Oh yeah. Now some of you are saying, why did you have to rotate that in the middle? Stupid, you should have be Well, when you have the cheapest of all metal cutting band saws, you gotta do certain things. See all this nonsense? That's not normal. There's shims stuffed in here. This thing doesn't cut straight. There were no adjustments. It cuts straight now, but if I make adjustments here, then there's a problem. I never cut anything this thick. I have a cutoff saw to do that, but uh, after I fooled with this one afternoon to get it cutting exactly square, I ain't gonna adjust it, so it wouldn't fit. The, the, the screw head was hitting the pipe, but that's okay. I just rotated it and made the blade go in the same spot, and there's the cut, so it does good. That's why. Now what? I don't think I wanna do this burner the same way. That other feller did his because there's no adjustment. How about instead, oops, you can't see anything. Rather than weld this on here when it's just exactly right, why don't we just make this get fixed into the grill over here, whatever spot we want it with whatever bracket we can weld on the outside and hold it up and then we just slide the tube in from the side and it somehow locks into a bracket and maybe as a thumb screw that would allow some rotation so if it gets off bubble you can you know adjust it but also uh, you could remove it if you wanted to what if that gets rusty and the hole gets too big and it gets I don't know what if you have to replace the black iron pipe well, I don't want to, have to remake the whole thing if this was fixed in the machine, that might make sense. Matter of fact, you know, another idea might be uh, make the whatever I have to doobly do up here for the walk to sit on, because I'm not sure the height distance that needs to be off of that just yet. Anywho, weld that right to the side of this pipe, right? Maybe there's a bracket that comes up this way and this way and this way. Three pieces and then a ring that the wok sits in type of thing would be one way to do it. And then again, this pipe would just slide in underneath somewhere through one wall and over to the other wall kind of thing. Hmm, I don't know. But I know what dumb thing I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna hook propane to this and teeter-totter teeter sit this over here in death position and we're gonna fire it up because that sounds like fun. Well, this is a bit terrifying. First thing I did was turn the gas on and not realize I had not <laughs> tightened the fittings on this end. So I was like, oh my God, this piece of junk won't even hold pressure. Anyhow, so for this test, I'm not gonna fool with that ball valve. I'm gonna leave that one on and I'm only gonna fool with this end so I don't have to be up here right 
on it and fiddling with that thing, which is not clamped in any way. That ain't gonna work. Hold on, I gotta fix the camera. Okay. Well, let me see this thing. Uh, all right, propane bottle, totally closed. It's gonna burp out a little propane because the line's pressurized, but I already turned the red. Let's see what happens. It stinks. Don't blow up the house. Jet jet, but I don't know why. Uh, is it out? Yeah, all the valves are off. I don't know why uh, it wouldn't stay lit. That's peculiar. All right, here's the latest thoughts. I like the way this wok sits. The grates are just about touching the bottom. They're not going to be on there though, and. If you look at this hole, it's pretty much centered on the space beneath there, right? So if I put some kind of a little flat metal bracket that sticks up here, it fits almost the space of the handles, well, then when it's time to cook and you bring the wok out, you just stick it on there. It can't get loose. It can't slide forward and back. I have no skill with flipping the pot, flipping the wok to flip the food. That's not going to happen. It's all spatula and spoon work for me. So... Uh, I just don't want the pot to move when I'm stabbing at it with utensils. I think that'll work. And height-wise, I think there's plenty of space to mount that burner down there and have, I don't know, I haven't figured it out yet, but I'm guessing like four inches of space between the top of the jet tube and um, the bottom of the wok. So I think that's the tentative plan. I got a bunch of round bar to bend up to make a support for this wok, but after looking at this, I think I'm just gonna use the sides of the grill. Why not? It holds it up at a almost perfect height and allows me a place to mount brackets to hold the thing from sliding around. So I think that'd be perfect. And the lid will still close, right? So without the rear sticking out, even with little brackets, they would, uh, slip in there if I make them right where the rotisserie hole goes uh, or mount them on the inside one way or the other I can make this work where it's closed down and weatherproof fully closed when you're not cooking and when you want to cook you roll it out flip that up bring out the wok stick it on its two pins like that and you're ready to cook that's the plan so the latest update is I figured out the way I'm gonna do it. I don't know if I said last time what I'm gonna do. Here's what I did. See this little fella? It goes through. I drilled that hole out bigger. I did decide I wanted to go this direction so that black iron pipe will get held down uh, through that second hole there. On the bottom side of this is the quick connect fitting for that. And so it was easy to drill the hole with, you know, one of those step bits through the stainless, no problem. Put in a grommet, I just decided the things don't clang together. And uh, it was cheaper to get the Harbor Freight threading apparatus than it was to uh, <laughs> buy all the short pieces of black iron pipe. So now I'm going to cut and thread the pipe myself to make the pieces. So this will go up here like this black iron will go over here and there'll be an elbow that goes down there well straight down and then there'll be an elbow that goes that way and then there's the mark that white mark where the pipe's gonna go in for the burner part that should have it uh, after that we gotta figure the rest out I'm gonna make some kind of metal that's adjustable to control the airflow on that um 
I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to do that yet, or how I'm going to make the support for the burner tube, but uh, that's to be determined. But I think this will work good. With this valve being up here, you'll have control of it, and that the second hole over here will be the clamp holding down the black iron pipe, and everything will be solid. And then this bottom hole will be where I will mount the uh, electric starter. I think it'll look pretty good. It gives you the ability to, with the quick connect there, the tube can sneak around the outside and go back and be stored in the bottom. But if I want to run this thing from the bigger 30 pound propane tank, I got a couple of those that you can't exchange at the hardware store and they're uh, maybe past due. So you can either trade them in or you can buy new ones. And my experience online with the campers is it's cheaper to buy an empty brand new bottle and then take that over to a propane filling place and have it filled. Anyway, it's quite a pain in the pickle. I've since graduated to uh, just getting a propane fill wet tap installed on the house propane tank so I can fill those big bottles from the house. Regardless, the point is, if you want to run it from a remote bottle, a bigger bottle, you can use this same setup and um, proceed like that. Put drill another hole bigger, put a grommet in there, and just got some coat hanger that's strong to hold it on there. Now eventually this will be stronger as it is, but it's it's you can certainly operate the knob, so I think it'll work. Okay, all I can say is sometimes you get lucky. <laughs> so, there it all is, right? All mounted up nice and solid, whoop, whoop. All the fittings are connected. I don't know how in the hell I managed to get those measured as accurately as I did. I put a little drill bit in there just to show that it's straight up and down. Boop. So that will work out. I just gotta figure out how to mount the tube in there and to give it its little, you know, vents. Mm. So this will have to go something like this and uh, we'll see how it works. But that's it, I can't believe it. It fit through the case. Uh, I mean, I can't measure that accurately, trust me. I just lucked out. I put some rubber underneath here. Everything's a snug, tight fit. Nothing's moving and everything's tight. So I lucked out.
because I was fully expecting these to be a quarter inch off on the distances or something, but shoot, that one's vertical, that one's horizontal, that one's horizontal. I, I don't, I don't know. I got lucky. I'll take it. it won't be long. This thing's going to be on fire. All right, thinking about the burner. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get out the welder, and I bought three eighths inch and half inch rod. Well, anyhow, I'm going to weld on the side of the pipe over here where I got it marked and make a little ear that comes out this direction. All right, same thing with the other four that are already marked. So that will drop it in and let it sit there. On the bottom side, imagine this is flipped upside down. I'll make two bumps that come up so that when you drop it on there, it'll go between those two welded on little nubbins. Right, so that centers it this way. It doesn't have any choice but to be above the hole. Then on the black iron pipe, I'm going to weld on a little stud right where the red magnet is, right where the red magnet is. So when you drop this thing in there, the ears can be bent and fine-tuned until they're right, and then it should just drop in place and sit there. It'll center itself over the hole, but it won't be attached to that black iron pipe at all. But it also can't fall, can't get loose, can't rotate. Uh, and everything is still removable. So that's what the plan is. And welding time. Get in there, right there, right there. Uh-oh. Ah, oh, we got no spool in action. Bungered up the welder. Can't remember what size tip I have on here. I guess this will tell me. bit of bird feathers and rat piss in it. Perfect. You don't get that kind of quality everywhere. Oh yeah. Not that. camera. I have to do that one more time. Contact. Next, oh, this is guaranteed, guaranteed camera knocker over. Just drop in there like it's supposed to. Oh, yeah. right in the center uh, yeah there's our hole so that's the plan just to drop on in there like that it's off enough to matter I like it I'm gonna tighten those welds up even more and then take that piece out and uh, get the igniter figured out in there that should be it we gotta be able to fire it up Look, I made Sputnik. Circles around in orbit. Check it out, though. Whoop. Whoop. There she goes. Oh, you can't see it. Oh, yeah. Now you can see it. That's it. Yeah. 
I believe that'll work. At least I freaking hope so. I still gotta figure out how to pinch off the air down there. I need to make a adjustable. I don't know what I'm gonna do there. Something that slides in and out, I guess. I didn't get that far, but that's next. Figure that out. Then it will actually be ready to test fire. And then eventually put the igniter in it, which I haven't figured out how to do that. How do you do that so you don't burn it up in the main flow of the gas, but it's close enough to ignite it easily? I don't have the answer to that. All right, Dan. Been scheming how to work this thing. Uh, you see the igniter down in there? That did not work. That does not ignite it. I had to, I had to light it with a torch. But, see those plates of metal? Just slid in from the side. I think I got a plan to make those stay right there with a couple of hose clamps. So, it works. And if you ramp it up, I think we're pretty much done. Oops, see? Cut it off and see the clicker does click down there but it's not enough in the stream no matter what i do i can't get it to light so got to rework the clicker all right okie dokie here's what we got so i put the clicker dicker down there e well it's not good I thought right near the orifice would be good. That's not good. If I would have researched it, probably would have found out that's no bueno. But anyway, it's difficult to light because of it. I mean, if you click way up here, just with the clicky clicker, it lights instantly. But because of where I mounted it, which is nice, it'll never burn up down there. You gotta really kinda baby it. I demonstrate. and then we're back to you know you can lower it way down so it sit there like that so I think we're going to leave things alone because I don't feel like drilling new holes in that pipe and getting the it was a pain in the ass I had to shorten the electrodes on the clicker carefully bend them without breaking the ceramic once they were in there and thread a hole to hold it onto the pipe so kind of fiddly delicate work if you break that ceramic insulator you're done so we're gonna leave it it would have been smarter if any of you guys are watching this and thinking about making one put the clicker where it comes in somewhere near the top and those long electrodes stick out in there because they won't get hurt by the flame as long as the uh, you know minimum amount in there kind of thing but higher up than this for sure. But it works. By the way, I was experimenting. You can get a little more out of it if you increase the pressure. But I think the sweet spot over here is about 10. Well, it was on 10. Something like that. Yes, I'd say it's about 100,000 to 150,000 BTU. It may be more than that though, I just don't know. So the next thing is to, um, see those metal plates down there? Uh, it cuts the air off enough to get the job done. So I think, you see a little tabs? Oh, you can't see anything. Let's cut that off. See the little metal tabs? Well, they're magic markered. I'm gonna cut them off. And see that little tab that sticks out that'll be left over here? That's gonna get hose clamped onto the black iron pipe. So those little plates will sit there and stay on the black iron pipe. And the, the this part will still drop in or out. If you unplug it from the clicker mechanism when they just push connections, you can take the burner out. Now, why would you wanna do that? I don't know. I'm just trying to make it so you can disassemble this thing if you wanted to. There you have it. Let me um, get those things cut out and go from there. Uh-oh, I think we're there, boys and girls. There it is. Rolls around, got the tank in it. 
I have to have the gas on at the moment. Oh, I can't operate everything. Just one hand, but, you know, flip the wings up, open her up. There's a little bit of a trick I found. Let's see? Oh no, I botched it. got to give it some gas, get the pressure up in the pipe, and then let off of it, and then click it, and you got it. Yeah. There it is. I think that'll get it did. I'm happy. Everything's mobile. I just have to make a couple of ears that stick up there and there. So that when you're sitting there cooking, uh, hold on, let me get it. Probably already said it, but I can't remember. Let's see. There's Mr. Walk, right? This is a lodge cast iron walk. And my thoughts was um, make two little metal things that stick up there it just can't slide off like that so it can't really move around locked in place kind of thing and that's it wonder what this looks like though with the flame on the pipe let's see oh botched it let's see did it hit it in the middle I'd say that'll get it. I think we're in business. Huh? Huh? Give it one more. Ah, yeah. Next up, I guess, is those two ears should be easy. Cooking some rice. Yeah. Gotta make it pretty. Temp. Um, oh, what is it? 2000 degree ceramic coating, flat black, you know. Try to afford it a little rust protection. That's about it. Where'd it miss? That's good. You guys, you keep spraying until it runs. That's how you know you're done. Top painting techniques I've ever heard of. And done. Luckily this stuff only takes like 10 minutes to dry, if that. Okay, see, done paint just Make things pop. In case you couldn't tell from my discussion how this thing worked, just drop it in. Well, this is it. Just drop the wires down there, get them out of the way. In goes Mr. Burner. Well, I sit directly on the metal thing. There, got the wires to fall. That's it. Everything drops in place. The wires you just fish up to that hole, which is super easy because there's a big old hole underneath there. That's it. They just plug on the back of this thing. 
which just then pops in right there and you put the nut on it and put the battery in, you're done. That's it. I think it looks a lot better now that it's painted. It looks official. I guess we gotta cook something now. Oh yeah. Welding time. <laughs> I'm gonna make hooks, attempt to make hooks. <sighs> and attach them in a way that I think makes sense. These are stainless steel rods and stainless steel washers. I have marginal welding experience and zero stainless welding experience. And I don't care. This isn't like having to be food grade. It's just add a little corrosion resistance to the parts inside the grill. Eh, I figured, screw it. Let's just see what happens. I do have 308 stainless steel wire in here. And I am gonna be running CO2 argon regular MIG gas mix. Is it gonna work? I got no idea. Let's find out. Worst that can happen is we tear it all up. Get the gas coming out of here. Contact. Oh my god. dipped. It's just freaking blasted on there perfect. I mean, you don't have to be that strong. Huh. Well, that was kind of stupid easy if that works. Hmm. Lucky, lucky. I mean, I got one ball of poof on the end of there, but take it over to the wire wheel. I guess it's strong. I got one little barnacle on here. Get off of there. Oh, all right. Hold on, be right back. Stuck it on the old wire wheel. Come on. That's gonna work. Huh. I actually wouldn't have thought so. All right, if you haters out there just itching for me to fail, well, to fail more or sooner, uh, yes, I remember to put the regular carbon steel wire back in the welder. Ha. Anywho, this is how it's gonna work. Cool. see? And then I just had to bend this in the right place so it'll drop in there. And then it'll just flop out of the way here when I'm storing the grill or what haves, and uh, that'll get it done. And I had some stainless with nylon inserts. And I'd have thought the nylon melt, and maybe it will. But that's what was on the original grill to hold that handle on was nylon nuts in there. I seen them. So, at least it'll all be stainless and hopefully it won't rust off, but I don't know. That's the plan. You've seen it. Uh, let me get that facilitated. I'm gonna get the torch, just a, you know, that little handheld homeowner grade plumbing benzomatic torch thingy. Just heat this when it's in the vise once I mark it and get it bent and uh, see how it goes from there. I'll show you when I got it finished. Testing. Bada bing. All right, been working on a heat shield situation because all the heat will come squirting out here into your eyeballs. Anyway, prototyped out of cardboard. I think I'm gonna cut it out of this deceased cookie sheet situation. There's enough metal there to do it. And this was the shape I had in mind. Uh, get in there. Like that. And then, I don't know, I guess uh, a couple of screws or something on the side to hold it on, but that would do it. And it fits the contour of the wok. <laughs> it's awful thin stuff, this cookie sheet. 
I don't know how long it'll last. I don't know how I'm gonna make the bends in it either, but well, we'll find out. Well, I don't know how long it'll last. It's pretty lightweight stuff, but all the bends are made. It just drops in that slot, rests like that. Put Mr. Walk in here, whoop. That's about where that sits. And then you can see, just got a little air gap. This will probably get red hot a bit. But anyways, I think it's good enough to deflect the heat. And if not, we can make it out of something thicker later. But uh, that was a good cookie. I remember that cookie. Mm -hmm. Well, there she is, boys and girls. The wheeler into place. All right, up with the shelf. Oh yeah, cooking utensil. Oh yeah, shelf. Oh yeah. <whistles> Fail. Open Mr. Liddy. Looks better after we send it off to our paint and powder coat department. <laughs> Looks better after we send it off to our paint and powder coat department. <laughs> Assuming I don't store this in the lock, right? Locked into position, ready to cook. Boom, boom. There she is, boys and girls. Huh? I thought this would be a little different, and I've been I've been trying and enjoying using a regular wok on a converted turkey fryer right it was a stainless steel pot rig from bass pro but the burner is fine i reinforced it to handle more weight to use it for home brewing and then it just sat around and then and i was looking for something that'd be super hot burner and i thought well that'll do it so i've been using that and it actually works pretty good but it's very ugly and rickety and you got to flop another table underneath it because it's height that's made for you know being a turkey fryer and uh, I wanted an upgrade and this turned into quite a bit more complexity than I really anticipated, but uh, the rest of it is not, you know, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist here. It doesn't take a rocket appliance. Um, you apply a whole bunch of heat to that cast iron and throw some food in it and start cooking. And if you scorch the bejesus out of it, well then you turn the heat down so the rest of it's pretty much gravy, but um, thank you for watching and good luck with your projects.